Confession of Faith, Chapter 11, of Justification, Section 1. Those whom God effectually calleth, he also freely justifieth, not by infusing righteousness into them, but by pardoning their sins, and by accounting and accepting their persons as righteous, not for anything wrought in them or done by them, but for Christ's sake alone, nor by imputing faith itself, the act of believing, or any other evangelical obedience to them, as their righteousness, but by imputing the obedience and satisfaction of Christ unto them, they receiving and resting on him and his righteousness by faith, which faith they have, not of themselves, it is the gift of God. Question 1. Does God freely justify those whom he effectually calls, not by infusing righteousness into them, but by pardoning their sins, and by accounting and accepting their persons as righteous, not for anything wrought in them, or done by them, but for Christ's sake alone? Answer. Yes. Romans 8 verse 30, and Romans 3 verse 24. Romans 8 verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Romans 3, verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So then the Papists, Socinians, and Quakers do all err, who maintain that the righteousness whereby we are justified before God is not without, outside of, us, but within us, and inherent. Because, number one, if inherent righteousness did justify us, then good works would justify us. But Scripture denies that. Romans 3, verse 20. Romans 4, verse 6. Galatians 2, verse 16. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. And Titus 3, verse 5. Romans 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans 4, verse 6, Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Galatians 2, verse 16, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. In all which places, works, are secluded expressly from our justification. Number two, because the righteousness whereby we are not justified is not properly our own anyway. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 and Philippians 3 verses 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Philippians 3, verses 8 and 9. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and to count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Thirdly, because we are not justified by the law, Acts 13, verses 38 and 39. Acts 13, verses 38 and 39. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Fourthly, because our justification is given us freely, Romans 4, verses 4 and 5, as well as Romans 11, verse 6. Romans 4, verses 4 and 5. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Romans 11, verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. 
otherwise work, is no more work. Fifthly, because our inherent righteousness is imperfect, 1 Kings 8 verse 46 and 1 John 1 verse 8. 1 Kings 8 verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives into the land of the enemy, far or near. 1 John 1 verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Sixthly, because if we were justified by inherent righteousness, we should have matter to boast of, which is contrary to Paul's doctrine in Ephesians 2, verse 9. Ephesians 2, verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Seventhly, because the righteousness of a Christian man is the justifying of the ungodly. Romans 4, verse 5. Romans 4, verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Question 2. Does God justify men by imputing faith itself, the act of believing, or any other evangelical obedience to them as their righteousness? Answer. No. Romans 4 verses 5 through 8. Romans 3 verses 22, 24, 25, 27, and 28. Titus 3 verses 5 and 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Romans 4 verses 5 through 8. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Romans 3, verses 22, 24, 25, 27, and 28, verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Verses 24 and 25, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. And verses 27 and 28, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Titus 3, verses 5 and 7. Verse 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Verse 7, That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Ephesians 1, verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So then, the Arminians err, maintaining that faith itself, and the act of believing, is imputed to us for righteousness, because number one, faith is that by which we receive righteousness. Acts 26, verse 18. Acts 26, verse 18. To open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Therefore, if it is that by which we receive righteousness, it cannot be righteousness itself, because that which is received is far different and another thing from that whereby we receive it. Secondly, because we are not justified by inherent righteousness, as it is proven evidently against the papists in the previous question, all which reasons do clearly evince that we are not justified by the imputation of faith itself or by the act of believing as our righteousness. Question 3. Wherein, then, stands our justification if not in the imputation of faith? Answer. The justification of sinners stands wholly in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, his obedience and satisfaction imputed unto all that believe. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 30 and 31. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 19 and 21. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 30 and 31. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification and redemption, that, according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 19 and 21. 
Verse 19, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse 21, For he hath, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The Old Testament bears witness to this righteousness of Messiah. In Jeremiah 23, verse 6. Jeremiah 23, verse 6. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Likewise, the New Testament declares this imputation of Christ's righteousness to sinners in Romans 5, verses 17 through 19. Romans 5, verses 17 through 19. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. It is not merely pardon of sins or the effects of Christ's satisfaction, but the righteousness of Christ itself for which we plead. We are expressly told that God imputes righteousness without works, Romans 4, verse 6. Romans 4, verse 6. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. This imputation proceeds upon the grounds of the believer's federal union with Christ from eternity and of his vital union with him in time. The federal union is a consequence of the unconditional election of some to everlasting life from eternity. Ephesians 1 verse 11. Ephesians 1 verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. But the vital union is by receiving and resting on him and his righteousness by faith, which faith believers have not of themselves, it is the gift of God. Acts 10 verse 44, Galatians 2 verse 6, Philippians 3 verse 9, Acts 13 verses 38 and 39, and Ephesians 2 verses 7 and 8. Acts 10 verse 44, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Galatians 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Philippians 3, verse 9. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Acts 13, verses 38 and 39. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Ephesians 2, verses 7 and 8. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God.